When is a fossil watch a horrible gift idea? When you're trying to impress people with Rolexes. Good morning and welcome to the Mastermind Library. I'm John Perry, the Reach Architect, together with... Derek Agerberg, the Approval Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Here at the Mastermind Library, we like to talk about books that we think will have an impact not only on our lives, but potentially on other people's lives. And we want to hear what they have to say to gain more perspectives, to find different angles of how these books can benefit us and other people. I like it. Thank and you. and now you're questioning my watch. So I'm I'm a little discombobulated with, with watches at this point. But was that given to you by a client? No, was not. Okay. So... Today, we're here to talk about the book Gift, Giftology by John Rulin, and on, on it, it says, states it's the art and science of using gifts to cut through the noise, increase referrals, and strengthen client retention, and I absolutely love this book. It took me six years to read this book since I first got it. I got it as a free Amazon Kindle book. It was free on Amazon Kindle when I picked it up, and I added it to my library, and I just didn't get around to it until s probably about two to three years ago. And I read it, and immediately I told you about it, yep. and I sent you a copy. Had and, to read it. And the book, before we even get into the book, when the book comes to you, when you get the book and it's in your hand, it feels luxurious. Mm -hmm. It has this texture-based cover yeah. it, it, with, a, with a different weight to it. It has a metal bookmark inside with this really extravagant ribbon, silk ribbon type yeah. material. It just feels spectacular. Feels like a, a high dollar gift. A high dollar gift is what it feels like. And what's what's interesting, so the way you typically open the Mastermind Library, I want to open that with, so John, this book took you six years to read. It can't be that good, can it? It is amazing. It's one of my top 13. It took me six years to read because I, I wasn't in a place to appreciate it at the time. I picked it up because one, it was free. So talk about the ultimate value. Uh, I like a good deal. Um, I like the synopsis of it. It just wasn't a priority to get in front of me. How many Harry Potter took me four tries to get through the first chapter before mm -hmm. I could get on with the rest of the, the book, uh, mm -hmm. over the course of four years. Um, I, I enjoyed the series. It just took a minute. Same with this one. It was just one of those things where I, 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 I thought there might've been value to it. Oh boy, was that an understatement? Yeah. And when I finally got around to it, I had to tell everybody. I had to tell everybody. So love the book. And we haven't even gotten into the meat and potatoes of the book yet. Right. But what you're saying is from your library, this is on your top 13 shelf. Always will be on my top 13 shelf. Okay. And ironically enough, it is on my top 13 shelf. So mm -hmm. for both of us, this is one of our 13 most influential books of our season, if you will. Yeah, that, you know, we, that we can hand out to people to, to, to potentially influence that would have a great impact on them mm -hmm. as well that I feel that had equally a great impact on me and they would get it just as easily as I would get it. It's very accessible, very accessible. Very accessible. Now, um, you hear people say reason, season, lifetime. Hey, people come into your life for reasons or a season or a lifetime. I mean, there's certainly a reason for this book. It's been a season and I, I think this is going to be on my top shelf for the lifetime. It is just that much of a difference maker. Now you said something before though, you said value. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons and getting into the book a little bit, the, the gifting process is not small, cheap, it's meaningful. And Best in class. Correct. Now I think maybe one of the reasons you didn't read the book earlier is it was free. It didn't have a value to it. It was a book. It wasn't a gift. It wasn't an expensive purchase. It was just a free book. And so getting into what he talks about, and when you say best in class, you know, I've seen people gift at low dollars and high dollars, and I've never heard anybody until him talk about what you just said, best in class. So what is, what does he mean by best in class, John? Well, let's go to the opening statements. Okay. Uh, he had an example of a client who wanted to impress a bunch of uh, C-level executives, uh, CEOs, uh, multimillionaires, uh, people who luxury is an everyday thing. And he get, and he had a budget, and he had a budget of about $100 a person. So he decided to gift them all really nice fossil watches, which were really nice watches. And the 99% of America would probably be ecstatic to get these as gifts. 
This though was the one percent. Yeah, they're wearing Rolexes. They're wearing timepieces from manufacturers that I probably have never heard of. And so a fossil, although is a nice thought, it is relegated to uh, a drawer or a regift a because re these people that he was trying to impress, they're Shania, Twa they're Shania Twain. It don't impress them much. So with that in mind, the, false, the, the intent was lost because there wasn't a connection or a value put upon it. He suggested in the book that a handcrafted $50, $60 coffee mug mm -hmm. would have been a much more usable gift to give them. Oh, because now you're saying best in class. So a fossil watch was not best in class of watches, but a $50 handcrafted luxurious coffee mug would be best in class and would be much more memorable to that C-level person. Exactly. And jumping back to the value of the book, I think it's also the overall experience of what it is. And in the sense of, I picked up a free Kindle book. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the physical book yep. that we praised upon the opening of the show. It wasn't this luxurious item that kind of was like, oh, this is this is different. This is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it was tucked in with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, great classic, and uh, probably some listicle top 20 thing of how to do something that I, I still don't haven't done. Still haven't done. <laughs> so uh, the, the knowledge was there, but it was a needle in a haystack of a bunch of other really good stuff or not so good stuff that I had to wade through to eventually pull out this thread. So his point is using gifts to build relationships and yes. wade through the muck and mire of, of the society and the instant gratification type stuff. Yes. Um, and if you think about it, what he talks about is going back to like your grandparents' generation, a well-written handcrafted card or letter or a meaningful gift, not a trinket, no, not trash. And it's interesting because the industry I'm in, I mean, the industry you're in, it's lots of trinkets and logoed items and things like that, that we get so used to, Hey, I'm going to put a bunch of coffee mugs out there with my logo on it. Mm -hmm. No, you know, the, the people that we're trying to impress want a coffee mug with their logo on it, mm -hmm. or they want something with their name on it. And so, kind of shifting the, the gears and turning the prism a little bit, I it, it struck me as so different that we need to be purposeful with the gift, not a quantity of the gifts. And, mm -hmm. you know, go buy 100 coffee cups and give them out to your 100 people. No, find a really good coffee mug and give it to one or two people and make the experience different. And he goes down a clothing store idea. Yes. And, and that brilliant. was brilliant. Brilliant. So, so, and I think you've even mentioned that store before. Yes, Brooks Brothers. Okay, so tell the story or... I mean, okay, so he uh, was at an event and met this uh, top level uh, influencer, uh, CEO, consultant, and wanted to... to he, he was at an event and this guy was speaking and he huge line out the door and he wanted to go see him. So, or he wanted to see what the commotion was. So he went in and watched him and was blown away with the content and the nature he had to say. He, at the end of it, went to the table to meet him, uh, was able to chit chat with him for a couple seconds, found out he was going to be in his hometown in a few months, asked him if he could take him to dinner and a, a game. The guy was like- Which everybody gets. Yeah, uh, which is like, sure, sure. You know, uh, the day of it coming in, his flight was delayed, he was running behind. Um, he did mention though that uh, he, no, he asked, uh, I, I'm so sorry for messing this up. He asked what his intentions were going to be when he got to town. He's like, oh, I'll probably come in, shop in my favorite store, Brooks Brothers, and then I'll go uh, have a nice meal and, and relax. relax. And then came the offer for the dinner and the game. Uh, he also asked at that time, though, at once he met Brooks Brothers, what's your shirt size? Just so he could have it. It was like a random piece of information, but sure, here it is. Uh, fast forward to the day of him coming in, he communicated that his flight was behind, he was tired, he's probably just gonna go and to the hotel. Grab dinner and, and, and go to bed. bed. So with a few hours to go, 
uh, John had the idea to go to Brooks Brothers, ransack the store with one of the new season of everything in this gentleman's size, bring it, get to the hotel, communicate with the concierge, which realistically at higher end hotels, they'll probably work with somebody like this, uh, get into the room, uh, stage it like a Brooks Brothers store, and just wait in the lobby for him to have dinner because I think the dinner was still on. He gets in, waves, checks in, goes to the room, comes down 20 minutes later, gives him all the time in the world, became a huge advocate for this guy. The experience was so monumental. It led him to sports clubs and other uh, large figure deals of introductions that had a cascading domino effect down the line. Um, Initially cost him $7,000 on his American Express that he said caused him a little bit of panic. Mm Mm-hmm. Ultimately cost him nothing because he returned what wasn't used and, and the CEO reimbursed him for the pieces he did decide to keep. And so... But it was the experience. But it, the experience was one of a kind, monumental, out of this world, uh, like nothing seen before or after since for this gentleman. And it was just the wow, the shock and awe. The shock of, and awe of and, it all. And the gift. So one of the things that it's interesting... Um, you see a lot of people gifting iPads and, and the iWatches and all of those Apple products. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of a, a standard gift now for a lot of people. And it, the wow isn't there, but I go back to when they first came out and it's still the same packaging. When it first came out, the packaging was a wow for yes. all of the Apple products. And you knew it was something special when you unpacked your old iPod. You know, I mean, just the packaging back then. And it was the experience of the product. Mm-hmm. It wasn't necessarily the product themselves. And that's kind of that same thing with, with the Brooks Brothers is the experience he created in that hotel room was the gift in and of itself. Yes. And it's basically the, hey, you're important. I'm acknowledging that you're important. It has nothing to do with the gifter. It's the gift e that about, is the important person. It's about them. Yeah. And I think that very often in business, we forget it's about them. It's what can be done for them. You give someone a, a something with your name or logo on it, it's not a gift, it's a promotion. Yeah. You give something with their name on it, that's a gift. That's a gift. You give something surrounded by them, that's a gift. When it's all about them, it's a gift. If it's a little bit about you, it's probably a promotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, Probably there's probably a handful of exceptions out there that I can't even think of at the moment. If it's about you though, it's about, it's a promotion. Okay. So this book, very easy to read, amazing business changing for both of us. Yes. Um, and it's really a three hour, four hour audio book. Uh, it's, two, two hour audio book. Is that at one speed? Because I know yeah. you're a little bit faster yeah, than no, most. No, no, it's 38 minutes at three and a half speed. Okay. Uh, it, it, but who's counting, right? But who's counting? <laughs> yeah, it's just a little over two hours at one speed. It looks thicker than what it is, but again, that's part of the deception part of the, of, the of, of, I shouldn't say deception, the luxury value addedness of it to make it, you know, it has really nice paper. It, it, it feels different than other business books or books in general. Um it's just a well-crafted thought that's been executed to near perfection. So it's a, if you think about it, it's probably the most value per words written of any of the books that I've ever read. Absolutely. So it's an interesting thing when you, when you look at it that way, because it is a very small book and we've read some big tomes tomes of books. Um, But he goes, there's basically three chapters, kind of the, the tee up and then talking about the experience and then, the process. Mm-hmm. And same thing in most industries, you see, Hey, here's a Christmas gift. Hey, here's a Thanksgiving gift. Here's things that are routine. And they're just rote times to do gifting where he talks about, it's got to be a unique time. It's got to be an odd rotation. So it may be timed for you as the business person, but it is not timed for the customers. So, and I know you and your business have done some odd days. You've done a Valentine's Day mm-hmm. card instead of Christmas. Um, but you know, if you say, "Hey, maybe you send out a gift every ninety-seven days," and it just feels like it's a weird rotation, yes, um, because it's about the gift to the recipient, saying you're special and I acknowledge you. Not, hey, I wanted to get everybody a Christmas card on Christmas, so here's Christmas. And I love Christmas. Mm. I love giving gifts. 
but it almost feels, especially when you read the book, it feels a little bit like the Grinch who stole Christmas, that everybody is so focused on the gift and giving that it gets, the message gets lost. lost. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. The uh, I'm a big fan of standing out. Uh, I, I like the idea. We've done Thanksgiving things and Valentine's Day things to show appreciation to our clients because no one gives anything around those times yeah. in our area or to my client base. And so we like to do little things. Going back to its best in class, some months over the last couple of years, you know, things have been a little bit tighter. So what does it say if you can't afford the best in class gifts? It says to write a handwritten note. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Girard is the most successful car salesman in the world. At one point he was selling like, I, I don't even know off the top of my head, but it was some ridiculous number of cars a month. And he did it with handwritten notes. That's the power of a handwritten note. He had to hire five people just to keep up to with help. his his handwritten notes. Uh, a handwritten note goes so incredibly far. It could be a handwritten uh, letter that's in it that you stick into an envelope. It could be a postcard that is very clearly not the computer generated. Mm -hmm. uh, a handwritten note on the back that says, I appreciate you. And people are just blown away by this simple act of personal, personableness. And it, it, it goes very far. And John talks about that, though. Yes. He talks about it's kind of like receiving a handwritten card from your grandparents. It's old school relational gifting mm -hmm. that somehow we forgot. Somehow in this social media world of instant access and gratification, the, the gift and the thought behind a gift has gone away. And, you know, it's funny. I... I mean, we're, it's Christmas season yes. right now. There's lots of packages showing up to the office because these ladies are shopping, getting stuff for their families. And, you know, there's a couple people here in the office that say things like, you know, I, I don't really know what to get that person. And for years, when people say that, that just bugs me because what do you mean you don't know what to get them? But what that really meant is they were putting more time and effort and thought into the gift mm -hmm. than I would. And now I realize I was the ding dong who was not very thoughtful with the gift and they were just being stumped because they didn't know what to get as a thoughtful thing. The best in class for that person for their yep. budget. Yep. And so, you know, I love this book. I, I would love to have a good conversation with John. Um, you know, you go back to some of the things that we haven't talked about in the book is he got his start as a cut co salesman. Yes. And so, you know, for the, I'm sure most people who listen to this have seen Cutco. It started out, my experience has been college kids selling cutlery, helping raise money for college and for, you know, a great business opportunity. And I've even used some of the Cutco knives here in our business. Um, but again, it's been used in a way that I was always explained, get the Cutco knife and engrave my name and logo and phone number on it wait a minute, no, it needs to be branded to that person, the mm -hmm. family name. And he talks about um, a example that it wasn't something he gave, but it was a multi-million dollar family that the kids were set up forever. And the patriarch of the family passed away and they fought in legal battle and fought in legal battle. Do you remember what they fought over? A harmonica. A harmonica. They lost $5 million in legal battles to fight over this $20 harmonica that their dad played to them every night before they went to bed. And again, that, that meaning to me of, Hey, wait a minute, that, that trinket, if you will, that you and I may see it as a trinket was a family heirloom mm -hmm. for everything for them. And how many times have I engraved a set of knives that have my logo and phone number on it, as opposed to, you know, the Perry family. Thank you so much, the Perry family, you know, and have something where you and your wife appreciate the cutlery and now maybe your your kids fight over it at mm -hmm. some point. Um, it's just that the crafting the gift that is an experience for the person mm -hmm. and and same thing, not broadcasting the message. I've screwed this up so many times in my life where he talks about it's a surprise. 
And do you remember what he said about the pizza? Oh, yeah. You you tell someone, say, okay, I'm going to come over with pizza next Tuesday. And you're thinking in your head, oh, it better not be X pizza. It better be Y pizza. And, oh, no, they should know now that I'm I'm gluten-free. So they got to make sure that it's a gluten-free crust or, or whatever else. Yeah, if he randomly comes over on some Tuesday with just a pizza in a box and maybe a six-pack of soda or beer, like, oh, I don't have to cook dinner. This is great. It's just such an unexpected pleasure. Yeah. And you can treat it as an unexpected pleasure versus preparing for the worst yep. or or managing the experience yourself for all case scenarios. And you can only, and this goes back to not necessarily from this book, you can only control so much in your life. Why spend the time worrying about things you can't control? Yeah. And he talks about when you there's a level of the surprise when it's appreciation that it's good to not have that time to contemplate well and, and, and just see that's the the mo- thing. And just be in the moment if it's about the recipient you don't tell them up front if it's about the gifter we love to say hey john i can't wait i got a christmas gift for you i can't wait until christmas all you hear is i i i mm-hmm. not you're going to love it you're going to experience it because you've already ruined the surprise. Mm-hmm. You've already ruined the process of of the recipient experiencing yeah. the thought. Um, and again, just the three simple reminders. It, it, you could read this book cover to cover, reading, just sitting down, not a speed reader, a couple hours. Yeah. You could be John Perry and listen to it in 38 minutes, mm-hmm. probably a few seconds. Um, but it's such a good reminder, and especially coming up on Christmas. You know what? None of us have to go spend a ton of dollars. Get best in class, do things that are meaningful and thoughtful, whether it's for our kids, our friends. And mm-hmm. you know what? If if the budgets are tight, do a very well-written, handcrafted message. Mm-hmm. Go buy some nice stationery. Yeah. Go buy some nice cards. And. He mentions several other books within this book that the first time mm-hmm. through I completely missed, such as the uh, Chicken Soup for the Entrepreneurial Soul, which mm-hmm. is now on my list of things to read. Uh, he mentioned another one right at the end, which is escaping my mind at the moment, which I added to my list of things to read. And he mentioned another book that we've read. Um, gosh. So those are three more books that we'll do in a later segment. segment yeah. Um, but there's two other things that he talked about in this. Um, Shameless plug, we could gift the Giftology book. Absolutely, gift the Giftology <laughs> book. Actually, <laughs> leave your comments below on what you think of um, our series so far, or, or feel free to yeah. message us, and we'll randomly enter everybody who communicates into a raffle that we will pull out, and we will gift a copy of Giftology and send it to you. So we appreciate you listening in and becoming a part of this mastermind journey with us, and uh, as a token of our appreciation, we will absolutely yes. gift uh, one of these books out and we'd love to hear what you have to say once you get it and read it. Yes. Um, but based on that though, keep in mind, this Mastermind Library is a discussion. It's yes. not just you and I sitting here. It really is you all leaving comments and, and fostering the discussions because there's nuggets in all of these books that even you and I miss. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny that, John, you had this book for how long? Six years. Okay, so six years you could have been reading it, but now you've read it how many times? Three. And have you gotten different nuggets out of it yes. each time? Like I said, this time was the first time that I paid attention to the that there was other books <clears throat> that he recommended within it where I don't know how I missed it the first couple of times through. Well, when you listen at 3.6 speed, John, I'm so sorry that you miss a lot of things. Well, I've only now <laughs> listened. The first time I read it, I read the hardcover version. Okay. Like I read it in the paper. The second time I listened to it, yes, I listened to it probably at two speed at that time. I was still, you know, yeah, ramping You're out. still slow. Um, this time though, at three, three and a half speed, you know, it just kind of struck out. And again, it's, uh, now I'm into the reading about 300 books a year. So books are a little bit more on my the, the eyes like, oh, level. like, oh, yep. another book to add. I, I need a, I need a, I need to listen yeah. to this other book. I got to pull this other thing. Uh, so I, I have to ask a book. What, what I've noticed I lean to is I always look to see what bonus material or what extra values the author is giving. And John has quite a few things in his bonus materials yes. that you can go get mm-hmm. for free. And it's 
a gifting plan to help you set up who you're gifting to, when you're going to gift it, what you want to give. Yes. He gives you a list of the top 13 worst gifts. He gives you a list of the top 10 best gifts. He gives you lots of things that you can plug and best play. Best in class elements mm -hmm. to go in. Mm -hmm. Now, the two things I really want to quickly run over with this so that um, before we run out of time is, one, why do we gift? To show our appreciation. Yeah. Also, to retain clients, to keep client retention because it is less expensive to keep a client than it is to acquire a new one. Yes. And he talks about a certain percentage of a budget of net income that the client brings in that should be budgeted back towards it. Mm -hmm. So in the course of your billables, that should be something you factor into your overall thing. The other thing he talks about that we haven't even touched upon yet is appreciation for employees. You know, we have, we're, we're talking about gifting and, and, and spending money or time on these clients. Who is responsible for making sure that we can have these clients to begin with? Who is responsible for keeping things going while we are out there getting these clients, talking to these clients, trying to pamper these clients? The staff back staff. at our, our office, those who are in dollar and non-dollar productive areas that help support us. Showing them appreciation is equally as important as showing it to our clients. And it shouldn't be a, oh, we'll spend, this person brought in, hypothetically, $10,000 of business. We'll spend, you know, $500, $800 on them this year to show appreciation. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the staff that actually enabled us to get this client? Should we spend, you know, $5 gift card to yeah. Starbucks on them this year? You know, what, what is it? You know, is it the random pizza parties? Possibly. Well, it, and he does say, you know, pizza is a great one if it's just random and a, hey, here's a random thing let's do. Let's have some pizza rather than, hey, on Tuesday, we're going to have a pizza party. You know, you take all the thoughtfulness out of it. So the pizza is much better than cash, according to John. And, and he gives you a link to a study mm. that talks about that pizza versus cash to an employee. But he also talks about how the employee that is ordering the gifts, a lot of times he'll order one for that employee because if they're giving the gift, they should experience the gift yep. as yes. well. And again, what an amazing idea that, you know, I, I send my staff out to drop off food to people to show randomly they're appreciated. But how often do I grab food and just bring it into their desk? Now, a lot of times I'll say, hey, I'm ordering lunch for everybody. Tell me what you want. We'll bring it into the conference room. But that's not quite as thoughtful as just me going somewhere, picking up some stuff. You know, here in Yuma, Arizona, just walk in with chili pepper, Mr. G's, and you know everybody's going to love it. Yes. Um, but as soon as you tell them, then somebody's going to say, man, I'm on a diet. Well, I don't really, you know, I, I think I want to eat healthy. No, no. And, and the flip side is, is if you do something like that spontaneous, if they are on a diet, if they are, then they'll be like, well, I appreciate it. Just not the right time. It's yeah. not, they don't, they don't get overly uh, sensitive about it. They are they probably a little sad that they're missing out? Very I, much, I, so. very much so. Yeah. Uh, yet they understand that it wasn't malicious versus having to, you know. And realistically, if you're in touch with your employees, you have an idea of what people are going through, so you're going to create yeah. some alternatives anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, but the employment side of it is another part of the. I mean, so again, for such a small book, it does cover quite a broad range of appreciation. So. Here we are, you know, where we're recording this, a couple of weeks before the end of the year. I would strongly encourage everybody, whether it's the end of this year, whether it's the beginning of next year, wherever it is, read the book. And my guess is you may retool your, your business marketing process mm -hmm. because you and I see the gift. It really is part of promotional. But if you make it about them and the experience, mm -hmm. it's going to go a lot farther. You'll create advocates. You'll create ambassadors. You'll create champions mm -hmm. because they will know that you meant a lot to them. And that means a lot to themselves, knowing how highly that they're regarded. Yep. So I can't thank John enough for writing this book. And again, I feel like this mastermind library is a shorter segment than most but this book is shorter. And I think based on the enthusiasm you and I both have for this, this is one of those very impactful books that if you haven't read it, you're missing out on the wisdom of the ages. I mean, it feels like, and I know he's not that old, but it feels like this is a message my great grandfather would have shared mm -hmm. and, and talking about 
the experience of crafting a letter, a small personalized gift, something that may have even been handcrafted. And I know John doesn't talk about handcrafted, mm -hmm. but think of what people used to gift a hundred years ago. Yeah. It wasn't driving over to Walmart. It wasn't going into Target. And he does talk about, you know, what would alienate him is if he gets a gift and happens to be shopping with his wife and they walk into a department store and see those gifts on clearance 70% off. Yeah. And we've all done those kind of things. Oh my gosh, those would be great. We could gift those out. But you don't think about the experience of somebody recognizing that it's a discounted oh, token. You bought those at the dollar store. Good mm -hmm. job, kind of a thing. So, speaking of which, uh, since we have a minute left, is there any particular place that you like to go to to find unique gifts? Um, well, he does have a website. Well, that, he does have a website that, that he does um, in terms of me for unique gifts. No, not so much. How about you? There's a place that I found years ago called, called Uncommon Goods, okay. and it has absolutely unique, one of a kind or few of a kind kind of things or what you don't think would be common, such as I got my father-in-law, who's an avid Padres baseball fan, a uh, baseball fan in general. He's been to the Hall of Fame a couple of times, uh, a pen that was made off of the seats of the old Yankee Stadium. Okay seen those those are amazing so it has that not just sports memory but other kind of stuff some of it's sourced from ethical third world countries you know handcrafted pottery to just really kind of different stuff mm -hmm. and this is not a paid ad this is not a sponsorship <laughs> um i but do like uncommongoods.com for those really unique things where you could find that 50 dollars coffee mug that's mm -hmm. handcrafted where you could find these really unique things that may attach to certain things. Uh, I know you're a Vikings fan. Yep. Um, if if I if I they, know, they, tore, I they know. tore down the stadium, defeat every year. Thank yeah, you for rubbing that in. No problem. Uh, but when they decide to build a new stadium and tear down the old one, if a piece of that stadium could somehow work yeah. its way in some part of part of thing, and in terms of something like a pen, something you could use every day, mm -hmm. would that make an impact yeah, on you? It it would because you know me. I I collect nice pens. pens. And you know, there, there's several things that I can use daily that for me, and it, it's knowing people is, you know, I like a nice coffee mug. I like a nice pen. You know, I do like nice watches. Mm -hmm. um, I know you, you're very much into comics and artwork and things like that. And if, if I found an amazing piece of artwork that got into the comic or fantasy genre, would that be a great gift for you? Absolutely. Okay. Would a season tickets to the Padres be a great gift for you? Oh, well, I'd prefer the time back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but see, I that, would not say no by but, any means. That would be an awesome opportunity. But but it's so funny because I've seen people, and we live here in Yuma, Arizona, people say, oh, I got you tickets to this game, but it's a three-hour drive each direction. So is it really a gift or is it a token of appreciation, but now you're making people do something more that they may not necessarily have the time. So it depends on whether that person is gaga over that team. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so perfect example, Padres, it would be awesome. I'd probably give away or sell most of those tickets. though, except mm -hmm. for the dime back games. Oh, great. So uh, those are re gifts. Yeah. yeah. Um, the dime back. So I would try my best to make the majority of those games, mm -hmm. you know, because it's just context and drive fast, uh, drive, drive fast and, and do it and turn around and, you know, make it work. So let's go back to giftology. He's got unique gifts on his he does. store. So again, unpaid, but you know, John took the time to write the book. I would certainly say go visit his, his unique shop. Yes. Um, he's got calendars on there. They'll even believe it or not, they've got a high dollar setup that you can hire a gifting specialist yes. to help you put things together to wow people, which again, now you go from a handcrafted cards to a gifting specialist and everything in between. But I really want everybody to take away the mistakes that I made gifting yeah. early. Um, make it about the recipient, mm -hmm. not about the gifter. Make it about the experience and the best in class. Mm -hmm. And we see these all the time. I mean, how many auto commercials do you watch and say, best in class towing? Mm -hmm. Okay, what they really said is they don't tow the most of any passenger vehicle on the market. They're best in class. Mm -hmm. Oh, so every other industry has classes. We just haven't figured that out from a gifting perspective. I don't have to gift you a Rolex watch. Mm -hmm. I have to gift you something best of and, that segment. And we got to get out of the, 
I'm still in college mentality where if I get anything for free, that's, that's awesome. You yeah. know, uh, well, you got the book for free and you didn't use it for six years. Well, the that's point a is, problem. as a gift, yeah. if, you know, how many times when we were in college, you got a free t-shirt or a free meal or a free something. If you just go to this seminar or if you just sign up for this credit card or if you do something, it, it, I think that there's some sort of like trauma that's associated with people who do this because well, it seems like, like here, come here, get a free t-shirt. It's like, Oh, free t-shirt. Um, well, it doesn't matter if I will wear it again. It's like, Ooh, free t-shirt. Yeah. Okay. How many timeshare seminars have you been through? One. <laughs> and what did you get for free? I think it was a, a massage. Okay. See, the, but we know it's, it's leading the, these, here's the freemium. Yeah. And so lots of people have really taken that, Hey, here's something free to draw you in. But again, that t-shirt probably had that company's logo on it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So versus a best in class kind of yep. thing that is about the customer, yeah. you know, versus a promotion. We got to get out of the, you know, accepting promotions as the end all be it. Now I'm not saying that if, if someone's offering you something that you absolutely want and it has their logo on it and you don't care, cool, go for it. It's just, if it's not something you need, if it is the lowest class t-shirt, but it has a logo on it and you're not dying for, for workout t-shirts, yeah. Maybe pass it up. Your time's more valuable. Your time's more valuable. But again, if if you look at the people that you may try to impress, they're generally not wearing other people's logos. No. They're wearing your own. So I know, John, you have your imaginary friends button on your jacket. I do. Now, that's your brand. If you gave that to me, I'm probably not going to wear it. You may see that as a great gift. You know, I would wear an Academy Mortgage. I would wear a U.S. flag, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to wear your pin if that was a gift. And lots of companies give things like that out as gifts or tokens of appreciation. And you call that marketing tchotchkes is what yes. you really call it. Um, but again, I, I think I really want to say thank you to John for writing the book. Yes. Um, well crafted, well thought out, an experience to read, but it's just an experience to pick up and hold. Like you say, it was it was a gift to open the packaging. And now having read through this, I think this is probably the fifth, maybe sixth time I've gone through the book. Um, unique things out of it every time and have printed all of the bonus material gone through kind of working on my gifting calendar for this year. And the hardest thing for me is I've been so structured of this goes here, this goes here on normal days. Now it still needs to be structured but it's now got to be on a random day where, you know what, there's probably not going to be Christmas gifts, but it could be a two weeks into the new year gift type thing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, just a great reminder. And, and it makes me think, you know, you say sometimes, hey, that kid's an old soul. That kid's a caring individual. This is an old soul kind of a book mm -hmm. that cuts through all the minutia of the instant gratification and cheesy gifts. I would agree. So, um, can't thank John enough and for everybody listening, please would be very interested in your comments on the book. Um, let's, let's start a good dialogue on this one. And, and I would love to hear what gifts you all are giving out to people. Yes. You know, what's been your best gift? What's been your, your worst experience of a gift? What, what is your, uh, friends and customers said about a specific gift that you have given out that you have maybe found a craft or so for? Is there some sort of hidden source that you don't mind sharing with us where you could find something unique or special that is best in class that maybe we could partake in, in helping that company out and purchasing them and sharing with some of our clients and friends? Love it. So from Derek Egerberg, the approval coach. John Perry, the uh, reach architect. Uh, this is the Mastermind Library, and thank you once again to John Rulin for writing this book. It is on the top shelf, top 13 for both of us. Top shelf, absolutely. Bye for now. Bye for now.